ribs. There are 12 pairs of ribs in the human body. As we can see them here, they are arranged from very small rib number one and then the length of the rib is progressively getting bigger and longer. So we typically say that rib number seven is the longest rib. As we move towards the lower end of the thoracic cage, the ribs become again shorter and straighter and the very last rib that we can see here in the upper left corner, rib number 12, appears to have very little similarity with the rest of the bones that it belongs to. Ribs, like vertebrae, are also easily sorted out on the basis of their typical features versus showing some atypical findings that is practically rib 1, rib 2, rib 11 and rib 12. Let's take a look here as what are features that we expect to have on a typical rib. This is a rib that comes from the right side of the thorax. If properly placed on a horizontal surface, it's the head of the rib that should raise up. We need to take a look at the rib's head from behind. Earlier we discussed that typical rib will have to attach into the space between two thoracic vertebrae. So for that reason on the rib's head we're able to find two different articular surfaces. One for vertebra above and the other one for vertebra below. Between those two facets there is a tiny bony ridge called the crest of the rib's head and the crest will be leveled with intervertebral disc. As we move over from head we're finding the area where a rib becomes a little bit narrower and that is generally referred to as the neck of a rib. Going further away from the neck we're reaching the area that is known as the tubercle of a rib. The tubercle has two different parts, the articular part and the non-articular part. Articular part will have a nice smooth facet that will make the contact with a facet on the transverse process of thoracic vertebra. And here is much more rough and uneven non-articular part of the tubercle that excess growth of bone has been caused by attachment of muscles that will produce a strong pull force on the surface of the rib during the life and as a result of that activity the bone produces more bone material that ossifies later in life. Past the tubercle we're finding the area where rib changes its curvature the most. This area approximately from here to here is what we refer to as the angle of a rib. Once we pass the angle, a rib becomes much more steady in its appearance on cross section than here or here will show oval cross section surface and this is what is called the body of a rib. As we're following the body towards the most anterior part once we reach the end of it, there will be a slight indentation that rib has to offer. That area is of particular importance because rib will attach to the sternum, but not directly. It will use its own costal cartilage. In order to make sure that the contact between bone and the cartilage is a little bit more solid, that's why fovea or slight depression exists on the interior part of the rib into which convex shaped cartilage fits in. On the inferior aspect of the rib one can find out much sharper margin. Superiorly the rib is quite nicely rounded and smooth. However on its inferior aspect rib has much sharper margin 
that helps us identify this longitudinally directed groove, which is called the sulcus costae. Sulcus means the groove, costa is a rib. Sulcus costae is an excellent place that will provide full protection for the neurovascular bundle that has to keep passing covered by the rib. Those structures are intercostal artery, intercostal vein, and intercostal nerve. This is rib number one, which is considered to be atypical. So let's find out what are atypical features of this rib. It certainly has the head, but this time the head has only a single facet, as rib number one does not fit in between two vertebrae, however it makes direct contact only with the body of the first thoracic vertebra. This is the neck. This is the tubercle. Rib number one would make additional joint with the transverse process of first thoracic vertebra. Ribs one and two, unlike other typical ribs, would have two surfaces that could be easily identified as the superior surface and the opposite one, the inferior surface of a rib. On the superior surface of the rib, the most prominent finding is this elevation that is known as the tubercle of the anterior scalene muscle. The muscle which comes from lateral neck will insert on the upper surface of a rib and for that reason is considered to be one of the accessory muscles of inspiration. However, much more important is to understand that further anterior to the rib comes a groove that runs across the upper surface of rib number one and that groove is marked as the sulcus of the subclavian vein. Further, posterior to the tubercle comes another parallel running groove that will allow passage of subclavian artery also over the upper surface of rib number one. The bone that we have here appears to be a little different and perhaps surprisingly rough in its appearance because here where one would expect to have just a cartilage of rib number one we're seeing not just cartilage but we start seeing also the beginning of its own ossification. A joint that will be formed between rib one and manubrium of the sternum is classified as the primary cartilaginous joint which generally means that the joint is expected to ossify during the life and this is good indication of what the ossification process might have caused as a change. While keeping rib number one in the picture we're adding rib number two that is also considered to be atypical. Rib number two also has upper and lower surface However, the only thing that would make it truly different compared to other typical ribs is this area of interesting roughness that other ribs should not possess. This area is known as the tuberosity of the serratus anterior muscle. Although the muscle has multiple attachments on different ribs, only on rib number two it is generating a landmark that makes the rib two also fitting into the description of atypical ribs. Finally, the lowest two ribs, ribs number 11 and rib 12, are also considered to be atypical ribs. In many books, they are also listed as floating ribs, referring to their pointy end that usually lacks the cartilage and for that reason ribs 11 and 12 with their most anterior tips do not establish the contact with the rest of the chest wall. For that reason they are referred to as floating ribs. Compared to description of typical rib we realize right away that few of these features could be found as ribs 11 and 12 are significantly shorter than other ribs of the thorax Therefore, they are going to miss large number of identifiable anatomical landmarks. We're able to find the head with a single facet for attachment of rib 11 to thoracic vertebra number 11 
and a single facet also on the head of rib number 12. You would notice that there is no tubercle on rib 11 or rib 12. They are curved along the different radius and of course they should not be able to reach and establish the contact with the transverse processes of thoracic vertebrae 11 and 12. Also quite interesting to observe that ribs 11 and 12 also do not have sulcus costae and vessels that pass inferior to rib number 11 and rib 12 are going to be protected but using the other methods.